Hello and welcome to this quick video. This is one that's coming out relatively quickly after I've got a product. Now, typically I like to hang on for a week or two until I've had chance to put this kind of technology through its paces. But this is one of those things that kind of came out the blue. It's a brand new proprietary HD FPV system that seems to tick an awful lot of boxes. Now, I saw it probably only about two weeks ago, got contacted and said, would you like to try one out? started looking at it and was suddenly kind of, where the heck did this come from? Because those of you that were watching the channel will know I'm still kind of figuring out the whole open IPC stuff. Although I fly walk snail a lot, I fly DJI in the past, HD Zero, even old stuff like conics and other bits and pieces. Something like this just appearing out the blue doesn't happen very often, and it's quite exciting when it does. Now this is the Edge T3 HD video system. It's not expensive. Uh, the air unit and the ground unit set, which is what I've got here, is only being sold at the moment for $279. If you want more air units, they're $119. Now that is much, much cheaper than other comparative HD products. And I've just been having a look through all the documentation and I thought I'd just run through some of the highlights with this because this sounds like a next generation HD FPV system that we could use in the hobby but also potentially be used by professionals. So some of the highlights, well, obviously one of the highlights is the price. Um, this seems overly cheap, particularly when you start looking at the specifications. They're claiming up to a 35 kilometer range, 120 megabits per second bit rate maximum. There's actually an inbuilt battery in the ground unit that will give you 80 to 100 minutes runtime, so you don't have to uh, plug other things in, although you can. It can be powered from a USB-C port. 60 milliseconds latency, which is going to be fine for planes and VTOLs and larger quads. I know for some people that's going to be too much, but for lots of pilots, that's going to be absolutely fine. 20 milliwatts to 2 watts power transmission, and it comes with two twin high gain antennas on the ground unit with a 120 degree field of view. Surprise, surprise, they're left hand circular polarized and RPSMA, which seems to be how everyone does it in HD land. Now, it's when you start to get into some of the weeds about what this thing actually does and how it works that you start to see the difference between what this is claiming it can do and things like the Walk Snail, HD Zero, and even the latest DJI stuff. It has anti-tear technology to compensate for signal loss and lost frames. It'll be interesting to see how that impacts the performance when you get into the edge of range, because sometimes those kind of hiccups are an indicator that you're coming to the outside of the area you can fly. The camera unit here is a Sony Starvis 2. Now, the sensor, uh, the Sony Starvis sensor is one that I'm a big fan of. It gives fantastic high definition and really, really good low light performance, particularly in color. And there also claiming that this has AI powered color balance. There's actually three settings you can choose from natural cinema and enhanced. They all do slightly different things, but you also get really nice color nighttime low light images too, thanks to that lovely Sony Starvis 2 sensor that's in the camera. Upscaling of the images of 1080p to 2.7 and 4K for things like DVR, spectrum sharing so that uh, hopefully nothing is going to get stamped on when this thing fires up. There's a three in one data link much more like the kind of stuff that you see on the DJI systems where not only can you receive the video information and actually maybe change a few settings from the ground station, but there's also an RC link and other stuff too. So this starts to feel a little bit like this is designed for a more complete system that may be on the way. Color on-screen display uh, designed to work with iNav, Betaflight and Ardu Pilot 2. Hooray! Uh, running MSP version 1 and version 2 support. Uh, the on-screen display in the images in all of the online bump looks absolutely beautiful and it looks a lot, a lot more impressive than the stuff that I'm currently working with in things like Walks Now. Ground unit supports wired Ethernet wireless Wi-Fi for video and data sharing. So you can plug this into a PC via the Ethernet cable, but also you can connect to it and look at the video and other stuff via something like a phone or something else as well that's cableless. 
USB-C and HDMI output for connections to HDMI viewing hardware. So that means that if you have goggles, a screen, or maybe a PC, you can pump the image into that as well. Uh, the kind of stuff that I've seen on the channel was systems like Healing, for example, I to do those kind of things. But at the bottom of the specs on the website, when you scroll down, is talking about support for gimbals and head tracking and support for third-party video devices that support RTSP H265 streaming. And these are the kind of things that I would typically expect to see on professional units, things like the Helix system. Now, I did ask my Patreons when uh, I was aware that this was on the way. I didn't let them know this, what it actually was, but I just said, what kind of questions would you have for a system like this? And so here's the quick fire questions and answers. And thank you for the Patreons who replied to that post. So. In terms of legal compliance, I'm not exactly sure where we're up to. It absolutely does have a CE mark on it. However, what that means, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't seen any kind of compliance documentation for it yet, but they're claiming it is fully compliant. Maximum range is 35 kilometers. Latency is 60 milliseconds, as we talked about. Image quality is 1080p. EIS support isn't supported. Electronic image stabilization is one of the few things it doesn't do. HDMI output is supported, but you do have to buy a separate Type-C to HDMI cable. Wi-Fi video sharing supported. Goggle compatibility, it'll work with third-party HDMI goggles. On-screen display support is there for iNav, Betaflight, and Arduino Pilot. Firmware upgrades are done over the air. Yep, you heard that right. Backwards compatibility, uh, they do want to maintain compatibility as they do further updates and bring out more kit. I just like to hear that from manufacturers because then otherwise you get stuck with stuff that you can't use with the latest technology, looking at UDGI. And head tracking is planned for future support. Now, looking at this stuff on the bench and chatting to the vendor and having a look at the specs, caveat, 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 I haven't fired this up and had a chance to play with this. I haven't had it here long enough yet, but I just wanted to share this. But my thoughts are initially that I'm very impressed. This feels like a really solid piece of kit. Will it live up to all those specs? Well, I'm sure we're all going to see lots and lots of content over the next few weeks. I know I'm not the only one that's been sent this, and I'm sure once it's in our hands, there's going to be lots of updates and firmware tweaks and things as well hopefully that sd card in the air unit is going to make things an awful lot easier as well as those over the air upgrades but in my hands playing with this here this feels more like one of those professional systems that i see up at 3dxr than one made just for the hobbyist but at the price point of only 279 dollars for both the air side and the receiver it's going to be hard to ignore for the next couple of months this feels to me like it's the start of an entire system that's going to be brought out with gimbals, head trackers, goggles, and other peripherals too, that both professionals and hobbyists can use, and there'll be a whole raft of things. They haven't told me that, but that's just what it feels like an obvious conclusion is, looking at all the documentation that's kicking around. Now, I still have my open IPC stuff here that I need to try out, but this is going to be one of those fun things to play with. And if they continue to maintain this price point, it's going to put an awful lot of pressure on some of the more established HDFPV systems that us hobbyists use to maybe sharpen their pencil a little bit on their prices too. So stay tuned. If you have any questions, please pop them down below and I'll pass them through to the manufacturer as I continue to figure this stuff out. But stay tuned. I'm sure myself and lots and lots of others are about to bombard you with updates, flight performance, comparisons, range checks and everything else on this new Edge T3 HD video system. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.